Okay, if you value this channel, please consider joining it as a member. There's a join button below this video. Perks include exclusive badges, emojis, and other member exclusives, but won't change the content of this channel. It will only serve to enhance it as we continue to grow with each milestone we reach. Now we're talking recruiting history and birthright. So pack a lunch. In the wake of Oklahoma losing commitments from running back Chase McClellan and 2021 quarterback Brock Vandergriff and now adding 2020 quarterback Chandler Morris to the fold, I'm reminded of one indisputable fact. None of those three is from the state of Oklahoma. Chandler, like Jace, is from Texas, and Brock is from Georgia. While I acknowledge OU needs to recruit both states regularly and will continue to do so in the future and win, Jay Hazelwood and Trey Sermon are from Georgia. Jalen Hurts, Baker Mayfield, and Kyler Murray are from Texas. All five of them have helped Oklahoma win five consecutive Big 12 titles and had a hand in OU appearing in four college football playoffs in five years. I also acknowledge OU will always have to recruit nationally, particularly California, Florida, and Texas. 185 of the top 500 recruits in the 2019 class come from those three states alone. The state of Oklahoma boasts just four. But what's not spoken about amid that 500 is the talent from the state that has built the Sooners program over the last two decades into one that hasn't seen a losing season in 22 years. The list is long and distinguished. It includes Sam Bradford, Gerald McCoy, Curtis Lofton, Jason White, Sterling Shepard, Ryan Broyles, Rocky Kalmus, Teddy Lehman, Dan Cody, Jamal Brown, Ronaldo Works, Kiwan Jones, Reggie Smith, Quentin Chaney, DJ Wolf, Ronnell Lewis, Javon Harris, Aaron Colvin, Gabe Eichert, Dominique Alexander, Kelly Gregg, Stephen Parker, Jeff Mead, Carson Meyer, and others. But the list of players Oklahoma did not earn signings from is staggering too. Justice Hill, Dax Hill, Josh Jacobs, Isaiah Jacobs, Josh Proctor, Savion Morrison, J.J. Hester, Thomas Grayson, Miles Slusher, Anthony Bland, Brennan Presley, and Jordan Reagan are all just players spending the last five years. There's also Felix Jones, Robert Meacham, Justin Blackman, Jeremy Shockey, Tyler Lockett, and George friggin' Kittle, whose dad was a friggin' OU assistant. They all escaped Norman. Like Slusher and Morrison, Mason Fine and Jay Sternberger didn't even get offers from Tulsa, let alone Oklahoma. One of those players is the most prolific passer in high school state history, and the other was drafted in the third round of the NFL draft after a hell of a career at Texas A&M. What happened to coaches combing Locust Grove and Kingfisher for talent? Here in Tulsa, my hometown, in Broken Arrow, we get Morrison's tape and statistics, which are mesmerizing, and we get Slusher, whose comp for me is Ed friggin' Reed. Alex Grinch wants longer, rangier defense backs? Then how does six foot two Oklahoma signee and a Bixby native in Jordan Reagan not even warrant an offer? Presley, his teammate, was the best player in the state last year, which puts him in the same paragraph as, yes, Dax Hill and Prentice Elliott, for those of you that remember him. Every Oklahoma team of substance has been built on a steel backbone of kids from the state. That's the same strategy that Ed Orgeron used to build LSU into the kind of team that's playing for a national title. Belitnikoff Award winner Jamar Chase is from Harvey, Louisiana. Christian Fulton is from New Orleans. Justin Jefferson torched OU for 14 catches, 227 yards, and four TDs. He's from St. Rose, Louisiana. John Emery Jr. is the number 13 ranked player in the country in 2019 and the number two running back in that class. He's also from St. Rose, Louisiana. Derek Stingley Jr. is from Baton Rouge. Terrace Marshall is from Bossier City. Patrick Queen is from Ventress. And Clyde Edwards Alaire is from Baton Rouge. The ships docked in Louisiana centuries ago and seeded the ground with hitters and hell raiders who became boot boy legends. As a matter of fact, 59% of LSU starters are from Louisiana. And don't forget, Oklahoma went head up with LSU in a recruiting battle for the top inside linebacker in the 2017 class. That'd be Jacob Phillips. And he was as close to being a Sooner 
as Jace McClellan was. Doesn't mean a damn thing if, like Blake taught us, you can't close them. However, 2017 was also the year the Sooners locked up the top five recruits from the state. And that's as it should be each and every year. Alas, it is not. While Lincoln Riley is one of the best recruiters in America, it's Coach O who recounts and remembers in vivid detail losing out on Travis Etienne, Dylan Moses, and C.D. Lamb. It's Coach O who sought out Auburn defensive lineman Derek Brown and Big Cat Bryant following a win to remind them he told them during their recruitment that he predicted they both turn into first-round draft picks. He lives and breathes recruiting. And that's what's made him into one of the best recruiters of all time. Pete Carroll hired Coach O because he knew he'd help him get Matt Leinart, Reggie Bush, Lindale White, and assemble one of the best college football teams of all time. When he got the head job at LSU, he hired football men to coach the play on the field and became the elite door-to-door salesman it takes to put a rope around the state of Louisiana and bring as much of its rich talent to Baton Rouge as humanly possible. If it sounds like I'm writing for Oklahoma kids to play at OU, it's because I am. I want a fence from Boys City to Broken Bow wrapped around the state because when it matters, the boys from the red dirt know what it means to wear Oklahoma across their chest. Their will is the difference between a strong tackle and a broken tackle. When the whistle blows and it's time to get into a three-point stance on the line of scrimmage, Oki boys stare down their opponent knowing they're going to kick your ass. And when they get beat, they get up, dust off, and go back to work. Because that's what it means to grow up in this state. It means knowing Oklahoma was the place where the government sent people it didn't care about. It means knowing our ancestors didn't wait for the whistle. They staked their claim in the middle of the night and dared someone to try to take it from us. It means when people talk about this state, that they don't talk about the grapes of wrath, the dust bowl, the thousands of tornadoes that have leveled our homes and our businesses, or the physical and emotional toll of a bombing that brought us to our knees. It means they talk about Sooner football before anything else. They talk about the greatest football teams of all time, of Bud Wilkinson's 47 straight, of Barry Switzer's swagger, of Bob Stoops' excellence. Perhaps you don't believe, as I do, that Oklahoma kids can more than get it done for the state's crown jewel. But seeing as I'm an Oklahoma kid, and I was discarded long before a group of folks who make up the core viewership on this channel decided I was worth a damn and had talent enough to lift up, I'm always going to disagree with you. I roll out of bed with my fists clenched, my jaw set, and my mind to prove them wrong and vindicate people like you who believe in me and believed in me from the jump. Because I'm a blessed God Oklahoman. Before President Theodore Roosevelt issued Proclamation Number 780 establishing the land of the Red Man as the 46th state in the Union on November 16, 1907, our soil was made stronger by the will and strength of entire nations. The federal government tried to cheapen, corral, and then collapse. I hold on to the knowledge that Oklahoma was where a president used his privilege to force entire nations to leave their ancestral homelands in 1828. Andrew Jackson went further still when he refused to help those nations fight for their rights against the states of Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. I remember our metal was first made steely by the Choctaw, Creek, Cherokee, Chickasaw, and Seminole 40 years before any damn land run. I remember Quapaw, Seneca, Shawnee, Delaware, and Kickapoo were the first to show the world this is how Oklahoma do. Ours is the heart and legacy of Caddo, Kiowa, Arapaho, Wichita, Wyandotte, Cheyenne, and Comanche. Ours is the place with the bravado of Boley, 
Virtue of Vernon, Tenacity of Tallahassee, Rage of Rennie'sville, Charisma of Clearview, Loyalty of Langston, Bravery of Brooksville, Greatness of Grayson, Love of Lima, Toughness of Tatum's, Resistance of Redbird, Truth of Taft, and Swagger of Summit. Then came the rest of us, the ultimate OK Boomer movement. They played by the rules. They were 50,000 who were going to wait for the official whistle and try to claim a parcel across 2 million acres on April 22nd, 1889. Then came we Sooners, we folks who ain't wait for no whistle, we folks who were going to get it how we live, by hook, crook, and any means necessary, we staked a claim, and we dared you to move us. The Dust Bowl, the Tulsa Race Massacre tried to ruin this land and tear us apart. We had nothing. We had nothing to be proud of. A 38-year-old botanist from Woonsocket, South Dakota, saw this. And he sought to build us a living, breathing monument of pride so we could see our name writ large. It's called the Oklahoma Sooners football team. It predated Dr. Cross and was slowly turning into a monster like Oregon football before Phil Knight showed up to make it rain. Dr. Cross gave OU a swift kick in the ass and told Jim Tatum to build this university a monster. Cross, sneaky plant dude, he hired Tatum so he could get to the real jewel coaching at Iowa pre-flight, Bud Wilkinson. Then came the monster. Then came the praise. Then came an understanding from the rest of the nation, really, and its college football programs that Oklahoma ain't the one to play with. And so recruits came to know this. But even for you folks that believe the core of OU's program must be made of players from outside the state, OU falls short there too. According to the 247 Sports Composite, Clemson signed 14 five-stars since 2017. LSU signed seven, as Oklahoma signed just four. But LSU went 45 years between national titles and just won its first Heisman in 127 years. For its part, OU has won seven national titles and seven Heisman trophies. And yes, we're counting. Meanwhile, Clemson has never won a Heisman. And I ask you, who is Clemson and LSU in the 150-year history of college football to Oklahoma? Shouts to my homie Keegan Renault, who came up with this note as well. Clemson has been dominating the sport the last four years and have not been above 60% in the blue chip ratio, which is a great predictor of national championship success. The Tigers landed five five stars, six five stars, excuse me, 13 four stars in 2020, and Dabo Sweeney and Clemson are only getting stronger. Whatever the reason Dabo Sweeney and Ed Orgeron are doing, or what it is, they're kicking Lincoln Riley's butt in recruiting. And you're not going to get anywhere by telling me Oklahoma high school football players ain't good enough. This is who we are. This is their birthright. This is my birthright. Son, we invented the bar the rest of college football is chasing. And that's why I ride for the kids from my home state. And I root on the kids that want to vindicate the people that have raised them up. And yeah, winning an eighth national championship would be nice. Be nicer still they cared about our kiddos, and they do, like we care about them, and we do. This is